Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be relationship choices. Well, I've got an email from a guy today that I'm going to go through. He's new to my work. I, he says he's watched a lot of videos, but he just started reading the book for the first time. He's already halfway through in two days, which I think is great. And what led him to my work was he was in a relationship with this girl that he was thinking he was going to marry. They were doing family planning to because they were going to have children together. And the longer he was with her, he started noticing integrity and honesty issues. And eventually that led to the end of the relationship. And so he's, you can tell he's a little bit jaded and his attitude is, do all women lie? And so he, he asked me a lot of different questions. He's asked me about my personal perspective on marriage and a, a, just a bunch of other things about the feminist movement. He just brings up a lot of really good things that all of us should discuss and think about, especially if you're thinking someday you want to get married or you want to have a long-term relationship with somebody or you want to live with somebody. Because quite frankly, when you look at it, that this day and age, I mean, I look at like my grandfather and my, my grandmother. My, my grandfather was in the Merchant Marine and he was always cheating on my grandmother. And just because I, you've probably heard me talk lots about the family that I came from, but he was in the Merchant Marine. He was always fucking hookers and, and this just went on like they're, the whole time that they were together. And that generation, like the turn of the century type generation, it's people still stayed together because it was a necessity for survival and raising a family. But you know, this day and age, women can earn just as much if not more money than men and quite frankly, they really don't need a guy to have a relationship with if they want to raise children. I mean you look at – look at the actress Sandra Bullock. I mean she's not married. She went through a pretty public divorce where her husband was cheating on her and she since adopted two kids and is raising them on her own which I think is great. She's a sec successful, beautiful woman. She wanted to be a mom and she wasn't going to sit around and wait on finding the perfect guy and I think that's awesome and a lot of people make those choices. So like this day and age, all of us, we have more choices than ever and you don't have to get into a situation where you're marrying somebody and you have to stay with them when you're not happy your whole life because speaking from the perspective of somebody that's been through a divorce and I was only married for a year, it's a really fucking unpleasant process. Even if you have a relatively amicable divorce, which my ex-wife and I did, it, it's expensive and when you get attorneys involved – and they you know they make money based upon conflict that's just that's their perspective that's how they make money and so even though you like for her my ex-wife and I we had agreed on everything and her attorney because she gave him this giant fucking retainer cuz she wasn't very good with money and he was doing everything he could to bill it out cuz he didn't want to give it, any of that money back to her cuz more than likely the fucking dude was broke as a joke and he'd probably spent all that money so I have a quote that I wrote in this topic. I'm going to go through the different items that he brings up in his email. And the quote says, People can hide who they really are for the first 90 days of a relationship. Human beings make choices based upon emotions and use logic and reason to justify their decisions. It usually takes 6 to 12 months for the infatuation or honeymoon period in any new relationship to pass. If you're thinking about making serious long-term legal commitments such as marriage, it's prudent to make them when you're no longer infatuated. Otherwise, you run the risk of being blinded by your emotions to the point that you willfully ignore red flags, character flaws, and integrity issues that you would normally have walked away from. So with that said, let's go through his email. He says, hey coach, I've seen a ton of your videos and now I am reading your ebook on the website and I'm about halfway through in about two days. I'm enjoying it very much and it's quite obvious that you are a subject matter expert when it comes to the entire process of relationships. Well, basically what I teach, I'm not here to tell you because I, I deal with people from every cultural, religious, and spiritual background. I deal with people that are ultra-conservative Muslim, ultra-conservative Christian, 
where no divorce and this is what I want. And I'm not here to judge. My job as a coach is to help people get what they want. It's to give them the skills and the tools so they can have the kinds of experiences with the kinds of people that they want. And if you read my book or you're somewhat familiar with my work, you know that my problem when I was younger was not so much getting a date. It was getting past the second or third date. Now, I didn't realize at the time what I was doing to turn these really great women off. So I was constantly dating women that I just wasn't that into and always thinking, oh, another one got away. And it's like the women that I wanted didn't seem to be interested in me. And the women that I really wasn't that interested in, they wouldn't leave me alone. And it's really nice to be able to have choice whether you're a man or a woman when it comes to romantic partners because let's face it, most of the people that you're going to encounter in this world, they settle in every aspect of their life. They settle for mediocre lovers. They settle for mediocre jobs and careers. They settle for mediocre businesses and business partners. They settle settle for mediocre peer groups and they get to the end of their, end of their life and they never really – have lived the kind of life that they wanted and had the kinds of experiences. And so for me personally, I'm all about having great experiences and being able to employ skills and techniques and strategies to get the things that I want in life. And I enjoy sharing these with other people because it's just like anything in life. The higher the quality of the person or the higher the quality your customers or your career or your peer group or the higher quality the foods that you eat, The more you exercise and take care of your body, you're just going to have a richer and more fulfilling experience in life. Because life is short. You don't want to be on your deathbed and just look back in your life and have tons of regrets. I don't have any regrets in my life. I've lived a very full life and I've had a lot of really amazing experiences and I've dated a lot of really amazing women that I've had the honor of having great relationships with over the years that have shaped me into the guy that I am today that enables me to read somebody's email like this or do a phone session with them and be able to pinpoint within a matter of minutes exactly what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong and what they need to do differently so they can get the outcome that they are looking to achieve. He says, my thoughts and questions are, why haven't you decided to get married again? Pass your genes along and live the dream. Well, you may have heard me talk about this in the past. Obviously, the guy who wrote the email hasn't, but on three, there's been three different women over the last 15 years that I came pretty fucking close to getting married to. A couple of them I wrote about in my book. The one had a daughter, and I wrote about that. And if you know, you're familiar with the book, that you know that I met her when she was still kind of seeing some other dude that I was an acquaintance of mine I used to work with like five years prior to her and I meeting. And they were actually together the night we ran into each other. But she had told me that they weren't together anymore and it was a lie. It turned out I didn't find this out till two or three months later that she was still dating him and still dating me. And like I said, I'm not going to go into the whole story of it. But that was always something that was in the back of my mind. I just never really felt like I could trust her. And she was the type of woman that if she was happy, she'd be loyal, she'd be faithful. We were talking about getting married. She wanted to get engaged. And I had we had had a falling out. I was like, I remember it was I remember like it was yesterday. We were talking on the phone and I was kind of short with her. I was kind of a dick. And I just had a stressful day at work and she had called me for I don't know, the third or fourth time and I was just kind of short with her and I didn't hear from her the whole week. And then so I finally called her on Saturday because that, that's the way that she communicated she's upset. I just got the silent treatment. Now with her, we could talk things out but what I found out was that she was hanging out and going and having drinks with some other dude and this – I mean literally days before, she's like, I was hoping we get engaged soon and here after a few days because I was short with her on the phone. She's already hanging out with a potential replacement because she was starting to think that I didn't care about her and I didn't love her. And when I found out about that, I was thinking, man, I'm just that just doesn't sit right with me. And that's just the way she was. And I looked at how she was when I met her and here I'm seeing the same kind of behavior. As soon as the relationship looks like it's in doubt, she's hanging out with another guy, potentially lining up 
a replacement because she was so insecure that she didn't want to go it alone. And eventually we went our separate ways and I got to be a part of her daughter's life for many years after we split up and got to be like a part-time father figure, if you will, to her. And it was awesome. It was an honor. I mean, it was a great relationship. A lot of the things that I perfected and learned, I learned in my relationship with her, and what I learned from her family. And I had a second woman that I dated a few years after her who was a gal from the UK. And she and I are still great friends to this day and we had a we never fought, we never argued, we just we got along wonderfully. And she's a really cool chick, the nicest, kindest woman I've ever met in my life. And the reason we didn't get married is that she had decided she had a very successful career in sports and training. She was a personal trainer, she was in fucking amazing shape. And she wanted to go back to school to become a chiropractor and I mean, this is like six years she was going to have to go to school for him and already she it was a long distance relationship and I didn't want to do long distance for six years and plus I was starting a new business at the time, the life coaching business and so I didn't know how long it was going to take me to figure out my business model and we just decided to go our separate ways and she, you know, after a year or two after we split up, she got into a relationship with another guy that she dated for I think it was like seven, seven or eight years and we talked a couple times a year and it was a great experience. And then I had another woman that I dated that I, I haven't haven't talked about this, but she was really cool. We had a lot of fun together. She was pregnant. We were going to have a baby together, and because she was somebody, you know, I kept meeting people, women from overseas because she was from another country. The only way we could be together was to get married. So we were really talking about that. And why didn't I marry her? She was really awesome. We had a lot of fun together, but the problem was. It's not that she was a bad communicator. She just didn't communicate. So she'd get pissed off, wouldn't tell me why she's pissed off and she'd just like, I need a few days to stew about it and then I'll give you a call. And it was just always like that. And if there was something wrong or something upsetting her, I'm a communicator. I'm used to talking things out. That's how I am with my closest friends. She just flat out refused. I would hear things like, I don't want to talk about it. I just want to have fun. I don't want to fight because she grew up in a very difficult environment where she did she had a brother that she didn't get along with they were always fighting her father had passed away when when she was really young and it's just you know after all the time of being together it's just, it gets frustrating after a while because nothing gets resolved it's like shit gets swept under the rug and you know we ended up breaking up and my attitude was like let we'll have the baby it's still i mean i I'm, are you kidding me i i love kids and she decided you know it went from her referring to the baby to it became a fetus and she was kind of a, a socialist far left kind of liberal we are like our our politics were complete polar opposite she's a huge fan of barack obama and that's just a whole other story but she decided that she was going to get rid of the baby and i didn't have a choice in the matter and i've never talked about it until you know, i've never shared this publicly now but it's like it it's something that still even to this day it fucking bothers me because i love kids but it's like i didn't have a choice she decided to get rid of the baby and i mean that was the end of it and we went our separate ways and i haven't spoken to her since and i'll probably never ever speak to her again we just you can't get a, i mean for me personally i can't be with somebody that refuses to communicate but it was a great experience i still love her if she called me out of the blue i'd be happy to listen to her and talk to her but it's like I mean sometimes you're going to run across people. You have so many things in common. We had a lot of things in common other than the politics and some other things. But just the way she looked at it was – it went from being a baby to, oh, it's just a fetus. But it is what it is. I mean sometimes those things happen. So that's just the way it worked out. When I was in my 20s, I really believed I got to get married. I got to get married because that's what everybody – and all my friends were doing and everybody was telling me that's what I needed to do and that's what society says you need to do. And my attitude towards marriage at this point is I look at it as a legal agreement. A lot of people look at it as a spiritual or a religious thing and I just don't look at it that way. So will I ever get married again? Fuck, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It's, it's not a priority. I just want to have really great experiences and have really great memories and continue to have – who knows? Over the next 30, 40, 50 years, I may have two dozen more girlfriends that I have long-term relationships. I don't know. 
I don't look at things that way. I just look at I want to enjoy my life. It's like what Jimmy Johnson said in A Football Life. He said, I just want to enjoy my life. That's my legacy. And when I'm not working, that's what I want to do. I want to enjoy my life and have great relationships with great high-quality people, the kind of people that I wanted, the kind of people that I couldn't have relationships with when I was younger. That's just me. doesn't mean it's right for you, but take what you want from it. So you ask, there's your answer. So he says, I was wondering if in your experience you have found an honest woman. Do all women lie? Are women capable of virtue or is it just something I should let slide? Well, in my experience, what I found, there are some women that are honest to a fault. Like my, my girlfriend from the UK, always been honest, always had incredible communication and I trusted her implicitly and vice versa. She came from a good family. Mom and dad are still together, great parents, very successful family. They believe in communication. Their parents have been together since before she was born. And so she learned good communication skills. She learned good relationship skills and she was always honest with me. I only had one, the, the one girlfriend who had the daughter. She was just, she was devious. She was dishonest. She'd tell little white lies and that's how her parents were. They told little white lies and kept things from one another. And at the time I was in real estate, I did loans for her parents, did more, you know, refinance her house and stuff like that. And one of them would come to me and say, well, I don't want so-and-so to know about this. And it's like, I was like, I'm not getting in the middle of that. If You guys need to work that out and let me know what you want to do. But she learned that from her parents. She learned to be devious and dishonest. So it's like some women are honest to a fault and other women, they're a little devious. It really depends on their background. It depends on what they learn from their families. Like one of the things that Doc Love said in his book the system which i definitely think you, you guys should definitely get a copy of that and support his work is one of, the, one of his chapters he said women don't lie and men don't listen the point of that is you got to learn to read between the lines you got because women most guys don't understand that women are not really direct they're not going to come right out and tell you in a logical way they tend to talk about things they use relational examples and try to get you to read between the lines because they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And so it's like when a woman talks about a friend, she may not be sleeping with that friend, but it's like for the average woman who they throw that out there, that's her way of saying, hey, that friend, that's your replacement if you don't get your shit together. And I talk about things like that throughout my book. And so it teaches you how to read between the lines so you don't get bamboozled. So there are absolutely honest, good, honorable women out there. But there's also plenty of fucking scoundrels. And there's also plenty of guys that are fucking liars. I've had lot, lots of friends that turned out to be total fucking bull-faced liars. And the friends that are still in my life to this day, those are friends that I trust. They're honest with me and we have a good friendship and we have a good relationship. He says, ancient Greeks were disgusted with this same sort of issue. I think there is a quote, you either love women or you understand them. Well, you can do both. Remember, the guy Sigmund Freud who invented modern psychology, Yeah, at the end of his life, he says, there's only one question I've been unable to answer. What the hell does a woman want? He couldn't figure it out. And if you read my book, you, you can learn things that even the great Sigmund Freud couldn't figure out. He says, you express the power of the media conditioning and the effect that it has on men. So it is a given that there is also conditioning taking place in the mind of women as well. Yeah, it's like, I mean, what you if you've been paying attention to the media the past couple days, it's like anytime Donald Trump says something, it's like 24-7 coverage. Oh, I can't believe you said that. People just going out of their minds. It's like everybody that you see on TV and the media, they all got an agenda. They got their worldview that they want to present to the rest of us. You got to be able to read between the lines and see the bullshit. It's like you got all these different factions, these corporations, these people that are in the media that want to, they believe the world should be a certain way. I mean, you can look at our president. He's pretty fucking delusional. He he sees and acts based upon the way he thinks sh things should be and he's pretty delusional in, in ignoring reality and if you look at the numbers and the polls, I mean the country has started to realize like what the fuck? But that's another conversation for another day. 
So it's like you got all these different people with these – everybody's got an agenda. The key is what feels right to you. That's the important. Never put anybody else's opinion above your own, including mine. That includes people that you look up to, friends, family members. Always listen to what other people say and see how it resonates in your own heart before you make a decision. They see all these women on TV who absolutely treat the men like shit, insulting and demonizing the masculine behavior. This is the third generation of feminism we're in. And I've talked about this in the past. And it's like the pendulum – the feminist movement was a great thing to get women's rights so they could vote, suffrage, all those things in the early 1900s. But they've just taken it to the extreme and they're like, just like neutering men. Like you see things in articles these days. Men should wear makeup. When, and it's like men – even the men you see on TV, most of them are very effeminate. They act like women. And this is what they're teaching guys to be. That's why women are always like, we're the real men. It's like there's no alpha males. Everybody's a fucking beta male because they want to make the sexes all the same. This all this gender equality stuff. We're, that ruins the sexual polarity. He says being a strong masculine man does not seem to jive well with feminism. And after you call her out on her BS, the problems ensue. All of this on top of the divorce court policies, which is financially crucifying men at a tremendous rate. I mean, yeah, pretty much. It's like when it comes to divorce, it's like the guys lose. When it comes to sexual harassment, the guys lose. That's just – that's the nature of the environment that we're in. That's why it's so important before you get married that you very carefully consider what, what's your downside? What happens if things don't work out? I think prenups can be a great thing, especially if you've got a lot of money and a lot of assets to protect because the bottom line is – when the shit hits the fan, all's fair in love and war. These rulings, policies, and biases against masculinity are subsidizing dishonesty and lowering the quality of trustworthy American women. Well, dude, you definitely sound a little jaded. And you'll see why in a second. He says, this is something I fear greatly. I was recently in a year-long relationship and I kept her attraction at a nine. She was calling, texting, and would cling unto me all the time. She was very much in love with me and I was with her but what I found over time was that she was not honest at all and lacking in integrity. That's why you date. That's why it's better to – like I was talking about. It takes a year for that infatuation to wear off. So when it comes to marriage, you should be together at least a year or two before you decide to embark on that journey. He says, as I become receptive to this, my trust in her dropped fast. So he says, she was very much in love with me and I have her but I found over time that she was not honest at all and lacking in integrity. And as I become receptive to this, my trust in her dropped fast. It's like I was talking about the girlfriend that had the daughter that I wrote about in my book. It's like I saw those red flags in the beginning but I was so fucking goo goo gaga over her. I was like, nah, I'm going to be different. I'll, I'll be better. I mean she'll never treat me that way because I'm such an awesome dude. And that's, what, that's the kind of shit we tell ourselves when we're infatuated with somebody. You see those red flags there, but you're like, ah, it doesn't that won't happen to me. I'll be different. Like Ayn Rand said, you can ignore reality, but you can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. We had been family planning, but I canceled that because I didn't want to put all of my eggs in this basket and eventually end up with a smoking crater of a life after she decided to have her cake and eat it too. When I saw her yumpy parents' relationship, the mom was a bossy professional bitch, dishonest and rude to her dad who was a wimp and didn't even fucking speak or express any opinions in a conversation around his wife. And you can see, where did she learn dishonesty from? Her mother. That's why it's important to pay attention to the family just like the other girl I was talking about. Her parents, it's not they were just horribly dishonest people. They just told little white lies here and there. I personally, I can't fucking deal with that. That shit doesn't work for me. But that's where she got, she learned it from her parents. And that's why I did not marry her. And we dated for, I guess, about three years. He, he continues on that he just let her walk all over him for the sake of their marriage, I assume. He was definitely a beta male and her brother is one of those man chinas who plays video games all day and acts like a girl. Yeah, because the mother is the acts like the man in the family and the father acts like the woman. I mean it's totally fucked up 
social dynamics. In your book, you write that a person will create what they fear. I absolutely agree and it partially applies here. But is a high level of virtue, honesty and communication not something to expect out of American women today? Well, you got to look for it and you got to know what to look for. And what my book does, it gives you the tools to be discerning. But at the end of the day, if you read the book 10 to 15 times and then you just ignore it and you just plow through anyways, it's like for me personally, it took getting burned by a few dishonest women before I realized, you know what? Those red flags that were always there that I ignored, I ain't going to do that shit next time around. And so when I start dating somebody new when I'm single, it's like I notice that shit, pfft, that's it. I see flaky behavior, pfft, I'm gone. It's the first time a woman doesn't do something she says she's going to do, pfft, I'm out of there. That's it. That's enough for me. Could it be that lies are just the forms of her tests? Partly, but I mean at the end of the day, you can't make good wine from bad grapes. And the chick was had no integrity, so she wasn't a marriage candidate. Is it a dangerous coin to flip when trying – it is a dangerous coin to flip when trying to marry and raise a family. Well, the way you got to look at it, it was a learning experience. That's what led you to my work. And now you have all these tools at your disposal. So next time around, when you the first time a woman like this tells you the first white lie, she's out of there. That's it. You don't give her another chance. That may sound harsh but you have to. I mean you spent a year of your life with this woman. You almost got married to her and had a kid and look how, how she turned out to be. It was no bueno. So the idea is to not spend a whole year with somebody like this. It's to get out as soon as you notice the flaky behavior. And the, more, and the better you get at this and the more experienced you get at it, the quicker you're able to turn and walk away as soon as you – find or spot those character flaws or that lack of integrity. Definitely something to think about. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to go to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen and just book whichever coaching option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.